So welcome back to Mix It On Air uh, for our next session, which is going to be in English because we got Martin here with us. Um, so the session is about the future of Java. We got Jose Pomar and Martin Stefanko with here. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as it's the first time you are coming to Mix It, maybe it we is. can start with with a short introduction of yourself. Okay. okay, thank you. So my name is uh, Martin Stefanko. I work for Red Hat as a uh, principal software engineer. I mainly work on uh, Quarkus, but also on uh, Jables application server. And yeah, Java is my thing. <laughs> 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 and uh, my name is Jose. I've been. Uh, I spend most of my time, actually, professional time, uh, in a university in, uh, in the Paris area. And I joined uh, Oracle a little more than uh, three years ago as a Java developer advocate in the Java platform group. And uh, I'm super happy to be here and uh, discover a really uh, super event. I hope it will last for long and that uh, more people will be able to come next year. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so, Jose, you're here but to talk about Loom, which Absolutely. was kind of the main feature in Java 21. Well, it has been there um, as beta for more releases, but mm -hmm. uh, would you like to speak a few words about it? Sure. Um, so I indeed, Loom is probably one of the most exciting features of 21, this because this is probably the one that will change the most the way we develop, uh, especially uh, high, highly loaded applications uh, in, the, in, the, in the next uh, years to come and uh, next decade. Uh, there are three parts in Loom. The first part that has been released is the virtual threads. That's a new technology uh, that you can use in uh, concurrent programming and, uh, and uh, I in the same space as what is now the space of reactive programming. Yeah. And there are two more features, uh, structured concurrency and scope values, which are still preview features and that will continue being uh, worked on in the next uh, few releases. Yeah. And Martin, as you're working on Quarkus, so you, you get more of the framework framework view of things, let's say. How would you say it's gonna impact uh, Quarkus and framework development in general? So uh, in Quarkus we took a little bit careful route with the virtual threads because uh, especially in uh, JDK 21, I, we believe it's not, like the ecosystem is still not yet ready for mm -hmm. virtual threads because there are still possibilities of how a uh, virtual thread can still uh, bring basically the same problems that you have with normal threads, like uh, pinning or monopolization of virtual threads, which uh, needs to be solved in underlying libraries. So in uh, Quarkus, Quarkus supports uh, virtual threads since JDK 19 when it was released, if I remember correctly, but uh, there is no like a global switch that can run everything on virtual thread. You need to like manually annotate every method or class that you want to use. I know that different frameworks took a little more brave approach <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we also believe that loom is the way forward we are just thinking that we are not there yet and especially because of like that uh, features that uh, has mentioned yeah I got I got a bit of a no naughty question but I'm gonna ask it anyway do you see a future for reactive programming now that loom is here so, uh, like, Quarkus is very heavily reactive based because it, we are based on uh, Vertex. Uh, I would say yes, because uh, basically the main issue that I see with virtual threads is that it's basically trying to combine uh, the ease of use from customer perspective of normal thread with the reactive model, and which is basically now hidden inside the JDK itself. and unless uh, basically the framework has access to that reactive part into that core, uh, we are basically very limited in the way what we can do with the code that the user writes. Because when with the pure reactive code, we control that event loop thread, we control how the code is yeah. executed. And uh, with virtual threads, we don't have this option. So I still believe that if you really need to have a very performant application, but we are talking about like less than 5% of real, real world <laughs> applications, then you should choose reactive. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Um, Jose, if uh, I'm a developer, I'm a developer. Um, I wrote my own application and I want to use a uh, thread for concurrency. And um, at the resource level, I can define the thread local to isolate my resource, okay? Um, but w do we have the same principle with, with this virtual thread? You mean for thread local variables and this kind of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
I would say yes and no. Uh, yes and no. <coughs> the, the, the first thing you need to think about when you're thinking about using thread local is that it's a technology that was added in the JDK2, I think. That's more than uh, 20, almost 25 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Uh, so using, you're, you, you're not using the top notch <laughs> thing <laughs> that you may think you're using. And it was developed before uh, Java Util Concurrence released in Java 5 in 2004. And that's also an important point. And there are certain, what we could call flow in the design as we see it now, things that would have not have been done today that were done 25 years ago because it was okay to do that, yeah. th to design things in that way 25 years ago. Uh, so this new model of uh, thread local variable, which is called scope values, uh, is actually some kind of a, uh, solving the same kind of problem with the same kind of tool, but without the flows of thread local variables. Thre thread local variables currently are, are used, even if you don't, if you think you're not using them, you're actually using them because your framework is using them. If you consider a transaction, for instance, in, uh, in Spring Boot or uh, the old uh, uh, Java EE um, approach, uh, opening the transaction and committing it uh, is actually handled by thread local variables. So even if you don't use them directly, <laughs> the framework for you is using yeah. them. Now, there are many problems and issues with thread local variables, like mutability, uh, the fact that it's, uh, uh, it's, it's actually a hash map uh, bound to a thread every time you create one, and that this hash map has to be transferred when your thread spawns another thread. And when you have many threads, it can become quite memory consuming, it yeah. consumes too much yeah. memory. Scope values are fixing all this. Scope values are immutable. They are bound to the thread that you launch. And what, what's what's uh, important to understand is that a thread is reused <laughs> in application server, all right? You are the client one, you're served by a particular thread, and then client two is coming and maybe served by the same thread as you. Yeah. So if you set yeah. thread local variables, they'll still be there for the next client. And yeah. this may not be what you want, especially if you store some kind of secret information. <laughs> <laughs> for <laughs> example, just... Okay? <laughs> okay. When, when I talk about this subject in, 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 uh, in, in, in talks, I usually ask the, the audience, do you know that there is a remove method on your thread local <laughs> variables? And then I have this, this reaction, mm -mm, mm -mm, really, there is a remove method. So if the people don't know that there is a remove method, probably because they don't call it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably they so, didn't just yeah, never see and, and that's <laughs> not, that's <laughs> not good. So scope value fixes all this. Scope value is not only bound to a thread, it's also bound to actually the calling of a runnable. Yeah. You 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 create your scope value and you bind a value to that scope value variable and this binding is valid within the scope of a method call, basically. And when you exit this method, everything is cleaned up for you, which is Safer. Yeah, which is safer. a big improvement. So the, the, the programming model is, is much better than the thread local variable programming model, and this is what you should be using. That being said, uh, thread local fully supports, uh, sorry, virtual thread, uh, virtual threads fully supports thread local variables. So if you, if you have a system that is built and you're heavily using thread local variables and you decide to move to virtual threads, it should, it should work out of the box, even if it, it's not great. Okay. you should change that. That's great. Guillaume, do you want to... Because I'm yes. woman-splaining yes. you. <laughs> <Italy>, so <laughs> no, it's no problem <laughs> for, for me. Um, I have a question bec because um, for the um, Kotlin developer, for example, yeah. uh, in Kotlin we have um, the coroutine uh, mm -hmm. mechanism and uh, with uh, Loom, uh, do we need to, to use them uh, uh, to use uh, yet the, the, the coroutine or not? If you if you if you're using Kotlin and you want to use coroutines, by all means do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not a problem. It's not that uh, you have plenty of features in the JDK that people don't use, even mm -hmm. if they are great features. It's yeah. not it's not about a question of ego. Oh, I want to use coroutine, and you, oh no, you should not use coroutine. You should use Quarkus. Oh, no, you should not use Quarkus. You should use it. It's not. It doesn't work like that. We are. Uh, this is a technological word, and we're using tools to solve problems. Yeah. Okay. It mm -hmm. needs to be pragmatic. Yeah. What is the cost of using a tool? What is the cost of maintenance? What are the performance? Are the performance yeah. better with this tool or this other one? These are the questions yeah. you should be asking yourself, right? Yeah. Uh, 
as of now, I'm not a, a cutting specialist, so no. you should really ask this question to a cutting <laughs> specialist. Are you a cutting specialist? No, okay, but so. I know that in Quarkus we do fully support Kotlin, so mm -hmm. I would guess that if we have that annotation in Java, it would also work similarly in Kotlin. Yeah. But I haven't tried. So from what I understand with Coroutine is that it's still based on the use of platform threads. Mm -hmm. So you will have, even if the syntax is nice and uh, you like it and uh, whatever, uh, you, you as of now, it's, it does not leverage uh, Voto thread. Now, the, the Kotlin developers, the people who are writing language, developing the APIs, are fully aware of Voto threads, and probably they'll do something about it in the future. So okay. you need to check that out. Yeah. Great. Talking about the future, um, I mean, so we we're very lucky because um, by the time Oracle acquired Sun uh, and the Java language, the community was quite worried that it might be the end of Java. And yeah. actually, it has been the exact opposite. The language has never been so uh, uh, dynamic and uh, evolving so fast, which is... And, and open, because actually and open. Oracle open sourced part of the JDK that was not open sourced by yeah. when the Sun was, uh, was in charge. And uh, we got uh, some new features which are coming in, in the future version. Could you tell me about those who are um, those you are ex awaiting the most? Let's say, <laughs> who are, which are the most exciting to you? Um, I, I think that uh, okay. So virtual threads are a big deal, really. Yeah. Um, I don't quite agree with what you said. I think that the the community and the ecosystem will decide, and uh, we can talk more about it in ten years from now. Yeah. And okay. see and see. What the what the community did decide, because saying that the technology will uh, take the field and uh, occupy everything in, in the next few years, uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> At least not for that. <laughs> so we'll see that. Uh, I, I think that uh, apart from that, one of the most exciting uh, piece of work that is currently being uh, developed is uh, called data-oriented programming. Uh, we've all been uh, nurtured with uh, object-oriented programming, create classes, extend them, add features, add stuff, etc. Model the world with object-oriented yeah. programming. This was the promise back in the 80s and the 90s. Now we know that object-oriented programming does not model the world. <laughs> 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 it took 20 years to understand that, but I think that but now we, we have it. But we can do this point, yeah, I agree. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, data-oriented programming is not something new. People have been thinking about that for decades, literally. It's like functional programming. Though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we have had uh, almost uh, all the elements of functional programming added to the Java language over the past 10 years, starting with Java 8 and Lambdas, of course. But also generics, parameter yeah. types are coming from functional programming, and that was that was in 2005, uh, 2004, 20 years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And now we have this new approach called data-oriented programming, which is one more tool in your toolbox. Now, in a nutshell, if I, if I just want to spend two minutes to explain what it is about, in object-oriented programming, uh, s suppose you have a, 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 an object model and you don't have a hand of it on it, okay? You, you can't modify it. With object-oriented programming, you can extend the types that you get, but there is no way you can you can add behavior to an exist yeah. existing type because the behavior is embedded in methods within those types, within those classes, and you can't change them because, by definition, you don't have a hand on that. So that's object-oriented programming. It's good at adding types, but not behavior. Yeah. Okay, data-oriented programming is the the, the 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 mirror of that. It's not good at adding types. You receive types, and these types are sealed, so you cannot extend them. You cannot add uh, implementation to, interf to the interfaces you get because the types are actually in interfaces. But you can add behavior to the existing types. So I would say it's another, it's another approach. It's, a, it's another uh, tool in your toolbox. And when you uh, analyze what you can do with that, and you try to uh, create some kind of resonance with the solid principles, with the principle of, of clean code, clean architecture, you will see that it actually works very well with that. It allows you to cleanly separate your concerns. It allows you to cleanly create business modules in your application, modules that you can add and remove from your application very easily, at least much easier 
than uh, in an object-oriented uh, and based application. I mean, from, from what you're saying, I get the feeling that it can fit very well with domain drive and development. It is very linked to all the, the to all these kind of things, domain driven, test driven, uh, architecture driven, uh, hexagonal architecture. I, I'm thinking about these kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, there, there are several major books that you need to read to fully understand that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there are some. <coughs> yeah. Um. And I have three in my mind. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think we got the same three. three. <laughs> I, think, I think we have the same thing. And, uh, and, and yes, domain driven design I is, is really also about that, about yeah. uh, creating modules that are almost self contained with the data, with the behavior, and the object model. Yeah. And if you don't need the features implemented in this module, you just throw them away. Yeah. Which is something that, okay, take your basic business legacy application and ask yourself, when was the time we last <laughs> removed the feature <laughs> from the code base that we're not using anymore? Yeah. It's, it's actually harder, harder to do than uh, okay. what, what it seems. So yeah. that's, that's your exciting That's my to exciting come. stuff. So we already have little pieces of it. We have seal types, we have records, we yeah. have pattern matching, certain yeah. portions of pattern matching. And there's more to come with the pattern matching. We'll have more, um, we'll be able to design your own deconstructor for regular classes. That that's the next step, and uh, and uh, other things. That yeah, that are and coming. That those parts are very pr promising. Yeah, absolutely. Already very exciting. I'm using record all the <laughs> record all time. Is so easy to use. I mean, yeah, you know, just oh every God. time now it's <laughs> it. <laughs> and what about you, Martin? Well, like generally, all the features which are coming, which are easing basically the writing of Java code, are always beneficial but uh, what I think will be at least in framework space game changer are value types and vectors because I see how much value they already bring in JDK in terms of uh, performance that even just like upgrading to newer JDKs will give you like smaller tens of uh, perf uh, percent of uh, performance boost so I'm really curious what we can do on that higher level yeah sure okay so I'm um, yeah, please go ahead. No, no, I mean, I, I just agree, yes. Uh, okay. It, it, it will not change the way you write code or, or the way you organize your application, value types, and, uh, and uh, what used to be called user-defined primitive typing, which is now called value type with default constructor, yeah. I think, which is basically the Valhalla project. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's also very, very promising. Yeah. So, nothing about crack? I mean... Th that, that's another part. We're talking about how people are writing applications. Yeah. Crack, garbage collectors, but all, because all these kind of, uh, yeah, cloud native, all these kind of thing. That that's uh, yeah, yeah because I mean that's that's something that I'm um, quite excited about. Actually, I I see a lot of promises around it. But maybe you want to quickly introduce it. Uh, yeah. So crack is a is a technology that allows you to you, you know that when you're running some java code it needs to warm up yeah. <laughs> it sounds weird but it needs to warm up <laughs> that it will be slow and then the the, the hotspot jvm will profile your your application the yeah. code you're, you're you're running really really profile it and then at some point decide oh well i could optimize this by natively compiling it at runtime so while your application is running uh, portions of that application are actually compiled in uh, native assembly code and it can be made very precisely because when you're running your application the JVM knows exactly the capacity of the CPU you're running on and uh, because of that it can really optimize your code on the CPU you are currently running on and if you take the same application on a different CPU the compiled code may be different and will be different most of the time. Now the crack technology said, okay, but there is this warmer time that, that can be milliseconds or even seconds. Uh, it, take, it takes some time. What about once everything is optimized, we just save the state of what has been compiled somewhere, even with the memory, all the state of the, of the, of the JVM, and we save it somewhere so that when you run this application on the same machine again, you can take what you've saved and just save on the milliseconds uh, of this warm time. That's the idea uh, around crack. So it's it, it's a very promising and very exciting technology. There are many technical issues because obviously there are things that you cannot save, yeah. li like like all the, the external resource, connections to databases, connection yeah. to the file system, connection to the network, all these and, and many other things. But uh, so people are working on it. They are trying to solve this kind of problem. And uh, once it's done, the, the, the solution 
uh, could be, uh, should be, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> that, that you, you will have a, 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 f a more performant application in a, in a shorter amount of time between the time you start up your application and you really launch it and the, at the time it takes you, you you save all this time basically this warm up time and that's that's the idea and but we're not there yet and and um i mean for quarkus i guess it can can somehow bring some improvements probably so like Crack is uh, solving slightly different issue than what we are focusing on because like Crack solves uh, slow startup or slow warm up, let's say. Like uh, yeah. really how to uh, get to the most performant Java ve uh, uh, version of your Java application as fast as possible. But what we are trying to push is that like what is that maximum performance that you can get from your Java application yeah. and how we will get there then that's like a separate issue. Like I definitely think that Crack will have its place like uh, going on but there are like other alternatives that are kind of trying to do like a different thing but it's not uh, I wouldn't say that it's like Java specific because like as I said, this is more of an issue like I would rather say more of the operating system issue because you need to really save yeah. the ports, you need to really figure out how to map everything back into memory. It's uh, th there is not much that we can do from a Java space in, in this area. Okay. And talking about Quarkus, what are your um, what are your current favorite features and what are the one you are the most exciting about in the future? Ooh. Well, like for me, and it will always be with Quarkus, it's that developer joy that uh, live reload uh, dev mode and basically all the things that are coming with it, which I'm going to speak about in 10 minutes. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but uh, other than that, I still think that we have a lot of like ways how we can improve this even further. Like really, uh, what I like about Quarkus the most is that I can just start the dev mode in the morning and sometimes even for like three or four days, which I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I can just continuously, you know, like continuously working without stopping, which was my like biggest uh, problem with like any other thing that I yeah. used before. Okay, so we're out of time. Uh, Thank you very much, Thank both you. of you. Thank you. Thank you. It was great to have you. Uh, we are very excited to see your talks. I'm sure everybody is. So good luck for them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we'll uh, f uh, see you in 10 minutes. We're going to take a little break and uh, switch to the next one, which is, I'm sorry, I don't have the entire planning in my Security. mind. Security. dans les applications. Peut-on rendre le sujet moins complexe? Voilà. <laughs> On va voir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.